The only way we're going to get really good at these word problems is if we do a lot of them. So I've got another six here for you. They start relatively simple and they get more advanced as we move along. So let's look at the first question. It says a square. Okay, what do we know about a square? We know that all the sides have to be the same length. So I will draw a picture to show my work. A square has an edge length of what? Two and three quarter meters. So I'll write an edge length of two and three quarter meters, which means the other edge is going to be two and three quarter meters. And all of them will be the same. Use your knowledge of fraction multiplication to calculate the perimeter, oh, the perimeter of the square. How do we get perimeter? Mr. Malm, I know how to do perimeter. It's base times height, right? No, it's not base times height. You know what base times height is? It's area. Perimeter is going to be edge times edge, sorry, edge plus edge plus edge plus edge. We're going to add all the edges up. So we're just going to go two and three quarters plus two and three quarters and then another two and three quarters and then the fourth one. If I asked you to estimate the answer to this, what would you tell me it is? You would say two, four, six, eight, right? I wouldn't recommend that because it is not close to two. It's actually closer to three. Two and three quarters is very close to three. It's just a quarter off. So we can say this is about three and this is about three. They're all about three. So three, six, nine, twelve would be a much better estimate. But let's calculate now this. Oh, wait, we have a problem here. It says use multiplication. We used addition. So let's just convert this here. We're just going to go two and three quarters and we have four of them. So we'll write four times. And then we'll convert this to an improper fraction. So 4 times 2 plus 3, that's going to make 11 over 4 times 4 over 1. And that's going to make what? Right, it's going to make 44 over 4. And if we reduce 44 over 4, right, we can divide by 4. We can divide this by 4, divide that by 4, and then you're going to get just 11 over 1. Okay, we can just write 11 then. 11 meters. That's our perimeter. I'll write P equals that. Second question talks about a rectangle. So we'll draw our rectangle. And we have a length of 2 and 5 6 and a width of 3 and a third. So 3 and a third is my bigger one. I'm going to write it over here. This can be our width. And my length is going to be on this side. It's the shorter edge. And now we're asked to find the area. So area, what is area? It's base times height, right. So we're going to go area is base times height, or we can say length times width. And then we'll pop the numbers in. We have 3 and a third multiplied by 2 and 5 six. Okay, estimation time. Let's see, what should our answer be close to? Well, 3 and a third is going to be close to 3, right? Right. And 2 and 5, 6, oh my gosh, that's so close to 3 as well. Because 5 over 6 is almost a hole. So we have two holes and almost another hole that's going to make very close to 3 holes. So we're going to have almost 3 times 3. We should get almost 9. Okay, let's see if we do. Turn these into improper's. That's going to make 10 over 3. And this is going to make 12 plus 5 is 17. So we have 17 over what? Over 6, right? That makes 170 over 18. Look, they're both even numbers. We can reduce this easily. Look, half of 170 is what? Half of 170 is, let's see, 85. Right, 85. And then half of this, now some of you might have not have known it's 85. You might have had to do some long division and did 170 divided by 2, break it in half, right? So you would have got 8, 16, one, drop the zero, and do all that stuff there. You would have gotten 85. Half of 18 is going to be 9, and this, this is as low as we can go. We cannot divide by another number. Now, look, take this and turn it back into a what? A mixed fraction. How many times does 9 go into 85? Nine times. Because that makes 9 times, 9 stays in the bottom. 9 times 9 is 81, plus 4 more. Aha, we've got... And our units is going to be centimeters. So we were right. The answer is close to nine. It's almost nine and a half because four is almost half of nine. So it's a little bit under that. But we got a good estimate going and we should be proud of ourselves. Now we have a little bit more advanced situation. We still have a rectangle. 
but we're given the area of the rectangle. Okay, now area is what? Right, area is the space in the middle. So we're going to write this number in the middle. This is our area. Eight and one fourth. Now this should be meters squares because it's area. And a width of two and one fifth. So we have two and one fifth. That could be our width, meters. And we're asked to find the length. What is the length? That's an L. Let's make L. Let's make a different L. Let's do that. How do we figure this out? Well, we know that area equals what? Equals length times width. We know the area is eight and one fourth. We know that the length is absent. We don't know what the length is. We know the width is what? It's two and one fifth. Look, if I gave you a question like eight equals blank times two, which are similar numbers, how would you find what this missing number is? Wouldn't you do the opposite? Wouldn't you divide eight and two, right? You would take eight, you would divide it by two, and then you would get four. And you'd say, aha, it's four times two is eight. We're going to do the same thing here, except now we have fractions. We're going to go eight. Now, we can convert this into what? We can convert it into a, an improper fraction. That's going to make life so much easier, guys. Don't sweat these sort of things. Just do them the easy way. 32 plus 1 is 33. And then we're going to divide it by 2 and 1 fifth, which is going to be 11 over 5. And that's going to get us what L is. Now let's do the division. We're going to take 33 over 4. We're going to multiply it because we've got to flip the sign and flip the fraction. And doing this, we're going to get, let's see, 5 times 3 is 15. Carry the 1 over. 5 times 3 plus 1. Right. And then the bottom is going to be 44. You can convert it back to a mixed fraction. And then you've got yourself your length. I won't do that part just so we can keep rolling. Michael was making a cake. He combined one and three fifth cups of sugar with six and a half cups of flour. How many cups did Michael mix all together? What are we doing over here? Are we doing multiplying? Are we dividing? Well, Mr. Malam, I know what to do here because we're breaking things up. No, we're not. We're putting things together. Okay, that's fine. So Mr. Malam said if you put things together, that must mean we're multiplying because multiplying makes more. That's the right idea, but you know what we're doing here? To be multiplication, it has to be the same number over and over again. We have to be adding the same number of group, the same amount in each group over and over again. And here, we're not doing that. We're mixing one and three-fifth cups. Here's a cup. We got one cup, one, and let's say this is, let's say this is just one and three-fifths cups. And we're mixing it with six and a half cups of flour. So this could be like our sugar, and this could be our... Now, this is going to be much more bigger. We're going to have more stored in here. We're going to have six and a half cups. And this is going to be our flour. And we're going to mix them together. Hey, how much is two marbles and six marbles? Isn't it eight marbles? Right? Did you have to multiply them? No, you added them. They're two different numbers combined. That has to be adding. It's not multiplying because the numbers are different. If the numbers were the same, then we would be multiplying. So we're going to go and add these together. We're going to go one and three fifths plus six and one half. Now, okay, improper fraction. So this is going to be eight over five plus 13 over two. Oh no, Mr. Malham, we got like different denominators. You're right. So we have to do what? We have to find the same denominator. So we can times this by five. We can times that one by five. And then what's that going to do? We're going to get eight over five here. And this one's going to become, um, oh, wait, no, we have to do something else here. we got to times this one by 2 because now we can make them both 10s. So I should have made this into 16. Let's do 16. Here, let's erase it. We have 16 over 10 plus what? Plus 15, 65 over 10. And now we add these together, we're going to get what? We're going to 75, we're going to get 81 over 10. Oh my gosh, these numbers are getting big. Now just turn it back, you know? If you can reduce it, reduce it. We can't do that here. We'll just break it down. We're just going to go 8, because 10 goes into 81 8 times, and you're going to get what left over? 1 left over. All together, we have 8 and 1 tenth of a cup. 
Sam's puppy weighs six and a third pounds. Janet's puppy weigh, has three quarters of the mass of Sam's puppy. Sue's puppy has two and a half the mass, two and a half times the mass of Janet's puppy. What is the mass of each puppy? Okay, well, we know Sam's puppy. Okay, we already have one number. That's going to be six and a third pounds. Haha, <laughs> we already got one of them. We just have two more to go. Now, Janet. Let's look at Janet's puppy. Janet's puppy has three-fourths the mass of three-fourths the mass of Sam's puppy. What does the word of mean? If it's surrounded by two numbers, of means what? Yes, it means times. So do we know Sam's puppy? Of course we do. It's right there. And we have a number on each side of of. We'll just times them. Don't sweat this stuff. Just, just go ahead and multiply these times three-fourths. So we're going to write 19 over 3 multiplied by 3 over 4 common denominators, right? No, we just multiply. It's multiplication. So we're going to have 3 times 9 is 27. That's going to make 57. And the denominator will be 12. And can we reduce this? Yeah, yes, we can. 3 goes into both. 3 goes into 57. And 3 goes into 12. Now, how many times does 3 go into 57? 19 times. And into 12? It's going to go 4 times. Now, turn this back into a mixed fraction. That's going to be 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay, 4 times. And then 17, 18, 19. We have 3 left over out of 4. And this, my friends, is going to be Janet's puppy. It's going to weigh 4 and 3 quarter pounds. What else do we have? So we have Janet. We have Sam. We just have one more to go. We have Sue. And Sue's puppy has two and a half times the mass of Janet's puppy. Again, we have what? We have the word of. We have a number on the left of of. We got a number on the right of of. Janet's puppy, we just figured that out. So we can multiply. Let's write Sue. We're going to multiply two and a half of, two and a half of Janet's, which is four and three quarter pounds. Multiply these, you're going to get five over two multiplied by, right, 19 over four. Let's multiply these numbers. We're going to get five times nine is 45, carry the four. We're going to get 45, uh, 95. We're going to get 95. And the denominator will be 8. Look, how many times does... Can we reduce this first? I don't think we can reduce this. So let's turn it now into a... Right, into a mixed fraction. 8 times how much will make 95? How many times does it go into 95? Well, 10 makes 80, 11 makes 88, and 12 makes 96. Too much. So we're going to make 11. Put the 8 on the bottom. That makes 88. And then seven more, very good, pounds. We got all our numbers, guys. That was a tough one. Let's move on. While preparing for a fight, Rocky trains 10 hours each day. He spends one and a half hours on one activity before taking a rest for one fourth, one quarter hours before moving on to the next one. If he continues the pattern, how many activities could he do in one day? Well, we know that we can either do adding, our options are these. What are we doing here? Well, we have a certain amount of time. We have 10 hours, and we're going to chop that 10 hours into, a, into pieces. He's going to take 10 hours, and really what he's going to do is he's going to spend time on, let's say, phase one, phase two, right? He's breaking his 10 hours into parts of a day, phase three. And we want to know how many phases he can do before the day runs out for him. How long does each phase take? It's got to be one and a half hours, Mr. Melman. It says right here, one and a half hours. That's right. However, that's not the end of a phase. The end of a phase is the one and a half hours and one quarter hour afterwards. Because you got to take the rest into consideration. He takes one and a half of training and plus one fourth more. What does that make? Well, this is going to be 3 over 2. 
This is going to be 1 over 4. So this is how it works. You're going to times now common denominators because it's adding. And that's going to make 6 over 4 plus 1 over 4. That's 7 over 4, guys. So each phase is going to be 7 fourth of an hour, which is almost 2 hours. And then the next one is going to be 7 fourth. And the next one. So what we're doing is we're taking 10 hours and we're breaking it into groups of 7 over 4. We have... 10 divided by 7 over 4. And that will tell us how many times he can repeat this. So we're going to go 10 times 4 over 7. That's going to make 40 over 7, which is, can't reduce it. So we're going to make it into a mixed fraction. That's going to make 5 and 5. Let's make it bigger. 5 and 5 sevenths activities. I'll just write active. Five and five seventh of an activity. Let me write it more clear here. Five and five over seven activities. So he can't really, he can do five full activities, but then he can only do five sevenths of another one. He'll run out of time. Then, then he's like, oh, time's up. Got to go home. <laughs>